your expertise in this. I can start by telling you there are four generations that we're going to talk about today. First is the veterans, and we're going to go through what the different generations are. Second, it's the baby boomers. Third is Generation X. Fourth is Generation Y. The fifth generation we're not going to talk about today is the Avatar generation. That's really my expertise because I have three kids that fall into this generation. My three kids are Mike, Tommy, and Nicole. I'm going to refer back to them a little bit because you're going to see what the different generations are. I'm going to tell you a little story to start it off. And it refers to me, myself, and the differences with today's Generation Y. When I was in third grade, I had a teacher, her name was Mrs. Sassini. Mrs. Sassini, when I was in third grade, I thought was the worst god-awful teacher you would ever have. I'm sure all of us had one of these teachers, the strictest teacher in the world. It's everybody, you know, you're all thinking about this teacher now, I'm sure. I went to Catholic school. Oh. Yeah, I know. Now, even if you didn't go to Catholic school, you've all heard the stories. That was Mrs. Sassini. She actually used the ruler on the desk and she smashed it if you weren't paying attention. <coughs> We actually had a principal who would push the gum into your hair if you were chewing gum. She was not so this really was that type of school. I went there for eight years. So I had this teacher, Mrs. Cassini, and I can't remember what the answer was that I said to the question, but it was a really ridiculous answer. Mrs. Cassini said, that was so stupid. I was a very sensitive little girl. I weighed maybe 40 pounds soaking wet in like eighth grade. So in third grade, you can imagine what I did. I went home in third grade, I started crying, I said, Mom, Mrs. Sassini called me stupid. My mom said, what did you say? And I told her, and she goes, well, that was really stupid. Now, go back to Generation Y. You have a Generation Y child who goes home. Imagine Mrs. Sassini teaching. The child goes home and says, Mom, Mrs. Sassini called me stupid. The mother picks up the phone and says, Hello, Superintendent. Mrs. Sassini said that my child was stupid. I want to have a meeting with the school board. I'm calling the press. The school board calls a meeting. The press comes in for the meeting. Mrs. Sassini is brought up on charges for damaging this child's life. The child now has an IEP. The child is brought in front of, you know, every, the whole entire press because the child's life is completely damaged. Guess what? The answer was stupid. Should the teacher have used the word stupid? Absolutely not. <coughs> But, what are we doing? The problem is that Generation Y was a little bit catered to. Grant, Generation Y has grown up with psychologists in the school. Did any of you have a psychologist in your school? Raise your hand if you did. We had a principal that put gum in our hair. I don't know if any of you had done. I did it because my older sister did and never chewed gum in school. I was devastated because if any of you knew me back in the day, I had really thick curly hair. And my biggest fear was that I would have to go bald. But generally had psychologists. They would go to school and they would say, hi, how was your day? Do you need to talk? Who would go to grammar school and say, hi, how was your day? Do you need to talk? It was, you don't have your homework? Go to the principal. No, you don't have your homework. What happened? Is everything okay at home? No one cared if everything was okay at home when we were growing up, right? If, if there was a problem, it didn't matter. Do your homework. The reason why I talk about these stories is it's something that we have to understand in terms of the way that they were brought up. In terms of the way that we, as society, brought up this generation. All of us, every single person in this room. Because as we go through the presentation, there's going to be a lot of, well, here's the problem with this generation, with the younger generation. I don't like to see this. We don't like to see this. When they come in for an interview, why do they do this? Well, let's think back to the way that they were brought up. Let's think back to all the positives that they bring in to the companies and to the agencies and to the wholesalers. What's happening is, when this generation was brought up, they were coddled. Do we all agree to that? Their hands were held, and they were coddled all the time. They were told, you will do anything that you want to do. We were told, what do you want to do? You can do anything that you 
want to do, not you will do anything you want to do. Do you all see the difference in those two statements? They were put up on a pedestal and told you are the best. So when they come into your office and you say, what do you want to do? And they say, well, I want to have your job. That's not a negative. That's a positive. It's our job as either employers or managers to take that enthusiasm and use that to build on our companies, on our agencies, on our offices. And it's our job to find a way to take their passion and their skill set and channel that. And at the same time, find ways to understand them 